Hello everyone and welcome back to the Omni Academy YouTube channel where I will be teaching you guys today a brief history on the development of English literature. Now the diagram behind me is really big, I know, but it's really a brief description that I'm going to give of each time period that I have written down in the whiteboard behind me. So we have five time periods that we're going to discuss. We have the Anglo-Saxon period, we have the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, the 1800s, and the 1900s. Now, if I'm to talk about the Anglo-Saxon period first, now what happens here in this time period basically is the immigration of five different countrymen and countrywomen to England. There were the Germans, the French, the, Ang the Vikings. There were five different groups, but what we are focusing on is the immigration of the Anglo-Saxons from Germany. Now, those people came to England when England was just a really undeveloped culture. But when they came, the culture the Anglo-Saxons brought and the undeveloped culture of the native English people merged and created a whole new merged culture. And the language of that merged culture was called Old English. Now, Old English is the oldest recorded form of English there is in the world today. Now, in Old English, when it was first written down, people needed to write a story. And by this time came the Norsemen or the Viking from Norway. And those people brought a story with them called Beowulf, what I have written down here. It's an epic poem that was passed down orally until their immigration to England when Old English was thriving as a language. Because of that thriving as a language of Old English, the people of England decided to write down Beowulf, this epic saga, into a literary work. The original manuscript is still in Britain, in museums preserved up to this day. And that is how Old English became the foundation of the English language that we know today. Next up, we have the Middle Ages. Now, the Middle Ages is a time span that goes up to goes up from the fi 5th century to the 15th century. Now, in the early Middle Ages, there was a man called Geoffrey Chaucer. He was just a normal man, but he became the father of English literature because he developed the formula for modern poetry through his book, The Canterbury Tales. Now, the Canterbury Tales, if I am to give out a small description of what the book is, it's basically about Chaucer traveling from his homeland, that is his hometown, to another town called Canterbury. And along the way, he meets these people. He sees these great environmental aspects of England, and he writes them down in poems. And the biggest thing about the Canterbury Tales is, the poems he used were written down in a structure that resonates with the modern poem. And because of that, Chaucer became the father of English literature. Now that's just the beginning. When it came to the middle parts of the Middle Ages and towards the end, the church, that is the Catholic Church, had so much power they started to influence every single area of English society. And that included literature. Now, the church realized that if they wanted to keep their sort of influence upon the English people, they would need to take a hold of literature itself because literature had a very big effect on people. Therefore, the church decided to use dramas or plays as a way of getting their message across to the masses. The message of Christianity, Catholicism, the Bible, and all that, and all those things. Now, the Middle Ages had three categories of drama that we need to study here. We have the mystery plays, miracle plays, and morality plays. Now, mystery plays portrayed a story from the Bible. Let's say the story of Moses. Now, if someone wanted to show the story of Moses in some kind of a play during the Middle Ages, it would become a mystery play. And the miracle plays portrayed a life of a saint, let's say, Saint Dominic. His life, if we want to dramatize it, would become a miracle play. 
Those kind of plays were very common in the Middle Ages. According to historical accounts, in any town square that we see in the Middle Ages, the church will hold weekly or daily plays, miracle or mystery plays. Now, morality plays are slightly different. Morality plays reflect on life and ethical codes. Now, one of the greatest morality plays ever written during the Middle Ages was called Every Man. It's about a man who is going to die. And after a brief account with every aspect of his life, wealth, love, etc., etc., he comes to realize that the good deeds he has collected during his lifetime are the only things that will come with him in debt. And that's what a morality play is trying to work up the ethical code of the people. And that's the main categories of literature one can find. Poems were really scarce during the Middle Ages and novels were non-existent and short stories. Those three aspects of literature cannot be found during these times. Next up we have the Renaissance. Now all of you know what the Renaissance is. It basically happened after the Middle Ages, Richard the Lionheart. He gathered all of the armies he could muster up and wage war against the Turks. Those wars were called the Crusades. It ranged for many years until the eventual defeat of the Europeans. The Turks won after they successfully captured the city of Constantinople, what we now call Istanbul. Now, after Istanbul was captured, the Europeans wanted to come out as a people. Therefore, they rallied and took books from the great city of Constantinople back to their own countries. Because back then, Constantinople was a hub of knowledge. It contained all knowledge from all across the world, from Asia, from the Western worlds, from the northern countries that like Russia, Norway, and from the southern countries like Madagascar, Africa, all those great knowledge was stored in Constantinople. And the Europeans were able to smuggle some of that knowledge back to their own countries. And the Renaissance started in Florence, Italy. From Italy it spread and it eventually reached England. And in England, because of the Renaissance, literature started to change in a very fundamental way. One of the greatest playwrights ever to live during the, the Renaissance is William Shakespeare. You guys all know about William Shakespeare. I don't need to tell you guys about him. Now, most of his plays like Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, A Midsummer Night's Dream, these plays are considered a turning point of English drama. And not just drama, William Shakespeare was a renowned poet. He wrote so many sonnets that later we had to number them. We have sonnets 73, 72. We have so many sonnets written by Shakespeare. And the best thing about Shakespeare was the use of his languages. Words like thou, thee, and art, hawk. Those kind of words were introduced to the English language because of Shakespeare. Now, if you take a very unabridged version of Hamlet, uh, like, let's say Hamlet. We have these big monologues and soliloquies and asides, all those dialogues, and we can see how much Shakespeare depended on the language he used. Let's say uh, Hamlet's to be or not to be soliloquy. Now in that soliloquy, it's considered one of the greatest because the language he used is so sophisticated and so intricately used. That's Shakespeare and there are so many others that we can talk about but unfortunately most of the literary works that were found during the Renaissance were destroyed. Even Shakespeare's work was destroyed by the common masses because apparently Shakespeare was gay and because of that people destroyed his works because being gay during those times were considered illegal in England. Moving on to the 1800s. Now the 1800s were 
a real turn point in English literature because female authors and female literary artists came up. One of the greatest is Jane Austen, the second name here. Now, Jane Austen is considered to be one of the greatest. Pride and Prejudice. She has many, and I mean many, literary works that were considered classics. We have Charles Dickens. We have Mark Twain. All of these names you have heard of. Now, the 1800s were a time of revolution because when Mark Twain lived, the American Civil War happened. You guys might not know about this, but America was under Abraham Lincoln's rule, right? And during that time, there was a civil war that raged between the North and the Southern states. It was called the American Civil War, and Mark Twain was in Mississippi during that time. One of his books, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and Oliver Twist, those books were considered to be written during the time Mark Twain served in the army of the United States. And Charles Dickens, you know about him, right? And uh, Jane Austen, all those great authors, they lived during the 1800s. And poets, they're lived poets also, right? Moving on to the 1900s, now the 1900s saw the beginning of the world wars, World War I, World War II, and the Russian Revolution. Now, you all know Maxim Gorky, the renowned author of the book Mother. Maxim Gorky lived during the 1900s. And when the World War started, we see a sort of a decrease in the publication of literary works. But after World War I ended, we got a whole new genre that we never expected. Fantasy. You all know Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Chronicles of Narnia. All of these great books were published after World War I ended. J.R.R. Tolkien served under the British Army during World War I. C.S. Lewis also. And they were friends, apparently. According to historical accounts, Tolkien and Lewis were friends. Tolkien was a published author when C.S. Lewis decided to publish The Chronicles of Narnia. And there was another called Roger Lanceline Green who retold some myths from Greeks. Egypt and Norway. All those great myths about Zeus, Poseidon and Hades from Greece and Isis, Osiris, Horus from Egypt and if we take the Viking section of myths about Thor, Odin, Freya, all those gods and goddesses. Now that's a real revival of the myths that we lived on as children. Roger Lancelin Green categorized them very beautifully. If you can find the books, I recommend those because it's written in such a beautiful way. We have other works of literature that actually were relatable to people. Some stories that were deeply connected to the people's souls during World War times. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas was a work like that. It was a recount of Jews being trapped in concentration camps during World War II. And we have Diary of a Young Girl. You all know about that. Anne Frank's world-renowned book about how she survived during World War II. Those kind of books were really popular and are still popular to this day because they are a reflection of life during those hard times. We have some other great authors that came up after the World Wars ended, right? Because after the World Wars, you know the Cold War happened between Russia and America. And... Russia was known as the Soviet Union those days, and the Cold War was basically about scientific advancement. And with that scientific advancement came on a whole other genre. We call it sci-fi, science fiction. We have, after the Cold War ended, we have so many great science fiction authors. We have Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. And nowadays we have Andy Weir, right? And detective stories. You know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he lived during the early 1900s now. Those detective stories became popular in the 1900s also. And when you come to the late 1900s, one female author stood up as one of the greatest detective writers of all time, Agatha Christie. Now, this is just a brief, a very brief description 
a very brief timeline on the development of English literature and how certain individuals help in that development. There are so much more to learn and I recommend reading books about them. There are so many great resources that you can study on the development of English such as Cambridge University's Brief History of English and A Short History of English Literature by the Oxford University. We have so many great books out there and we have articles in the internet. Study them because I have a limited amount of time with you guys in these videos and I cannot waste them talking about every single detail. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment, all right? Because I will always answer your questions regarding anything. And before I wrap up, I gotta say I'm so sorry that I was very late in posting another video to the channel because I've been very busy with my work and this is the only chance I got to actually record a video and post it. So I hope this was helpful. Like, subscribe to the Yomni Academy YouTube channel and we will hopefully meet soon on another video as soon as possible. Thank you everyone. Have a very nice day and stay safe because the COVID-19 pandemic is again rising up and please wash your hands, have a mask every single time you go outside and stay home as much as possible. Stay safe. Have a nice day. Thank you guys.